Okay, let's get started. Welcome to our webinar, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. We're in the Chicago area with lots of rain today, and I see that we have attendees from all over the country joining us. Welcome. We're happy to partner again with one of our most popular speakers and a professional trader with over 30 years of experience, Teddy Kekstad, to bring you this option trading webinar today on time flies when you're learning to profit from calendar spreads. My name is Gina Bokaius, and I'm on the management team of Regal Securities, which is the parent company of eOption and its sister company, InvestTrade. The session today will last approximately one hour. Our speaker will talk for approximately 45 minutes, and the remaining 15 minutes will be used to answer all your questions. We ask that you look now to locate the Q&A box on your screen. If you have any questions during this presentation, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box, and our speaker will answer those at the end of his presentation. We ask that, the, that you use the Q&A box and not the chat box or not to raise your hand, as our speaker will only see what's in the Q&A box um, for your questions. And you can access a recording of the webinar tomorrow on our YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe so you have access to it as soon as it's live. And you can go to youtube.com slash eOption today to subscribe. And we recently revamped our entire YouTube channel and you'll find trading education on there and playlists for whatever you're interested in, no matter if you're a beginner or more advanced. And we also encourage you to visit our website at eOption.com where you'll find all kinds of educational material as well as our past webinars and videos. I'd like to turn our attention to our speaker, Teddy Kekstat now. Teddy has over 30 years of trading experience, and you'll see shortly how he's very passionate about trading and educating others. He's currently president of Forex Trading Unlocked and the author of the book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns. Some of you may recognize his name from past webinars he's done with us, and we're happy to welcome him back today. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Teddy Kekstad. Thank you. Thank you, Gina, for that introduction, <clears throat> and thank you, eOption, for sponsoring this webinar today, and for all you attendees for taking the time out of your day. All right, so real, whoops, there we go. All right, so real quick, you already got a breakdown from me, uh, Gina, about my experience. So the slide, if you want to refer to the video later, you can always come back and look at it. Real quickly, get ready for all of you bulls and bears out there. We got some really good, interesting topics on the calendar spreads and the, um, the, the stocks that I've chosen. Uh, there's a lot of action going on, especially in one of them today. So very pertinent. Before we get into it, just to remind you, um, our e-option disclaimer is to uh, tell you that this webinar is for illustrative and educational purposes only. Okay, that is just to... Uh, I, I, just for education, nothing else. We're not trying to put any trades on or anything like that, okay? And then also because I have my company and I'm doing the webinar, I always put up my disclaimer from my company as well, which we're celebrating our 13th year anniversary this week. So calendar spreads is the topic of today's webinar. What you will learn, <clears throat> you will learn how to trade stock and other market movements without large capital allocations. You will learn how to expand your portfolio diversification. You will learn how to maximize your potential returns with options. And also you will learn basic bullish entry exit techniques and basic bearish entry exit techniques. Also the strategy we're talking about today, calendar <clears throat> spreads is also one of the safest option strategies out there. And also reasonable returns without the potential of a huge loss can be expected also. All right, this, you will also learn how time can earn you profits. Okay, now, so why stock option calendar spreads? Well, the options help you diversify your portfolio because you can trade a much broader range of stocks with your allocated capital. Options allow smaller to larger investors the ability to capitalize on trending markets that are highly liquid. Trading in these products is similar to trading in normal equities, but with higher potential um, ROI or return on investment. And trading options allows bulls and bears to reduce their risk. All right, today's focus. What to look for is something we're going to be focused on the most. Um, simplicity is best. That's also something you're going to learn is how simple of a strategy this is. 
finding actionable strike prices, um, use trend-based uh, trades to enhance your odds, um, protect yourself from reversals in the market, and also stocks versus options. So these are the things that we're going to brush on, and you're going to have a better understanding of after we finish this webinar today, or at least hopefully. Okay, so the parts. First, we have stocks. They are the underlying asset that we will be talking about today. You can use these strategies for ETFs and other um, markets out there, but today we are speaking um, on two particular stocks and the calendar spreads and how to trade them. So call options, the right to buy an asset at a fixed price. We will be talking about different call options. We will also be talking about put options. Put options I mean that you have the right to sell an asset at a fixed price. That's if you are purchasing these options, which we will be um, talking about purchasing and selling them simultaneously. The length of time before expiration. This is gonna be one of the key variables to learning how calendar spreads work because we will be working with two separate um, strike, uh, excuse me, uh, expiration months. So knowing the length of time before option expiration is important for when you put these trades on. Uh, the expected length of calendar option spread trade. That's another thing is when you put this trade on, you look at the different months to, based off of what kind of a length of a trade you're looking to um, initiate. How to integrate calendar option spreads into your trading plan is another thing we're going to discuss today as well. Um, what is the proper way to manage the spreads as they expire? So the ni nice thing about calendar spreads is it starts out as a spread that can give you a lead on another position, or you can roll out the um, front part of the spread, which we will get into in just a moment. So you can maintain the spread over time. So for a longer duration, or you can have it for a shorter duration. And we'll discuss the advantages and the reasons why you would do so as we move through this webinar. So take advantage of spreads and directional option trades at the same time. That's another thing that you can do when you are trading calendar spreads. Okay. How do you make and lose money? That's what everybody wants to know right off the bat, right? Okay, so very basically, if you were to just buy a stock of the two examples we're going to go through today, uh, that you only make market if the market goes up. That's how you profit. I think pretty much everybody understands that. Um, when you buy a call, if you were just to buy only a single call and the market goes up, you would profit. If you buy a put and the market goes down, then you would profit if you did that. Now, if you buy a stock and the market goes down, obviously you lose. I think everybody knows that. <clears throat> um, if you buy a call and the market goes down, your risk of loss is defined. That is something you don't have in a lot of the different financial products out there. Um, when you buy a put and the market goes up, your risk of loss is also defined. So that's the nice thing about options is that you definitely know when you are especially using safe strategies such as this, what are the, uh, the total possible loss that you can have on any, diff any potential trade that you put on. Okay, this is a market neutral position calendar spreads. Okay, and that means that you may be slightly bullish, you might be slightly bearish, but overall, you're not looking for any major moves at this moment. And the reality is, why would you have this outlook? Um, well, here's a number for you, when, especially when it comes to stocks. Stocks only trend 30% of the time. So 70% of the time, they're going sideways. So that means you would expect no market movement 70% of the time. So calendar spreads definitely have a very good period of during most of the trading year in most trading months of being somewhat uh, successful or breaking even just because of those numbers alone. Uh, <clears throat> once again, this is a market neutral position. The cost of the spread can be offset by rolling the position a few times. And that's what we'll get into after we get off set, teach you the basics of how to initiate the spread. And then we'll tell you how you can roll the spread. Okay, this can also be a short-term market neutral position that maintains a longer-term directional bias. And we'll get into that as we um, explain the mechanics and how uh, the spread will change over time. Okay, so here we go, long calendar spreads. The long calendar spread is also referred to as a time spread. So for those of you with math anxiety, don't worry, we're not gonna get talking, we're not gonna talk too seriously about the Greeks. Um, although one of these days we should have a webinar that gets into them, but we're taking a very kindergarten approach to make things very simple in our explanation and everyone can understand this. And it is a simple strategy anyhow. 
Okay, so you buy one call option and you sell one call option with the same strike price. Okay, that's the same strike price, but different expirations, meaning that one will have be of one month and the second one will be of another month. They are not of the same month. That's what makes it a time spread. Okay, so the fact that you are trading the very same strike price, the strike price does not change. The underlying market does not change. <clears throat> They're both calls, okay? But the difference is one is sold, one is purchased, and they're both of different expiration months. And we'll get into the intricacies of how that works. If you are, you can do a put um, calendar spread as well. That's where you buy one put option and sell one put option with the same strike price also, but they have different expiration months as well. So this is the same situation only with puts where once again, the strike price is the same, only the expiration months are different, okay? So the trader is selling the short dated option. This is the key right off the bat. The option that you sell, whether it is a put or call, is the short dated option. Short dated meaning that is the shortest term till expiration, okay? And it's gonna be all make, become clear once we pull up the chart after the slide. And then when you're buying the longer dated option in the back, the back month, okay? So remember, the trader is selling the short dated either call or put option, and then they're buying the longer dated further out month expiration call or put option. So whether you're buying doing the call time spread or the put time spread, the front month is the one you're selling, the back month is the one you are buying, okay? If you are bullish, you buy the calendar call spread. If you are bearish, you buy the calendar put spread. So now let's make it visually really stick out with an example that will make sense to all of you. Okay, so I would think that pretty much everyone that's watching this um, right now is familiar with the market IBM. At the time when I put this slide together, this was a few weeks ago, IBM was trading at $140.88. Irony of it all is today, the market has moved to $142.48. So the market has only gone up a little bit. So look, Remember how I said markets tend to trend only 30% of the time? Right now, it's, it's caught in that 70% where it's just basically going sideways. So now here's how these two spreads would be. At the time, whether you did or did not hold the stock, let's say you were just bullish and you wanted to do buy the calendar spread, meaning you didn't want to buy the stock necessarily, um, but you wanted to be involved in it and you wanted to have a chance to, where you had more than just a few months to play with. So that's where you would pick an October expiration, okay? So when I started this, this was back in July. It was back in the last week of July. Okay, so that would give, you know, July, August, September into half of October, almost three months for the part one that you are purchasing, okay? And notice that it's the 140 strike price. So I choose, chose 140 because it's very close to where the market was trading at. You could have done the 142, could have done the 140. I think there's a 142 half. This goes in, in half dollar increments, I believe. So the liquidity would have been there. I just chose this one because it was in the middle of the range. And also the market had been trending lower. So this is where you use some trend dynamics. So you can see where this S, H, and S is. That's a head and shoulders pattern for those of you that understand technical analysis. But all you need to know is here was this high. Then it made a low. It made a lower move high, lower move low. It, can't, it just came off a lower move high also and another lower move low. So it keeps on making lower lows and lower highs. That means the trend is lower. So in the short run, the trend is your friend. You would take, I would take, I personally would take the lower strike price because you're going to get more value from uh, the put uh, spread than you would from the call. And also for the call spread, if the, if the market is no longer a bear and it's going to turn, you're getting the better end for the call spread if you're being a bull. So regardless of the sides, let's just look at the numbers. So in this case, you would buy selling the August 13th call, the 140 strike price for $2.54. That's what the bid was at the time of the slide. 
that would mean you would be selling it for $254. So you would be bringing in to your account $254. Now, at the same time, you would be buying the October 15th expiration 140 call for $5.35 at the ask. This would be a net debit of $2.81, which equals a minus $281 would be the cost of this spread for you. Now, it's a neutral spread, so they offset each other. So there's no margin involved here, okay? So that means that you are, even though you are short the 140 call in the August month, you own it in the October. So you own the strike price. So when you remember when you have a call, if you own the call, you have the right to buy a stock at X price, meaning that, or X strike price, which is 140 in this situation. Well, this only has until August 13th before it expires. So as far as being exercised against you or anything like that, it has the shorter term. And even if it would be, you have the other one that offsets it. So this risk is something that you don't even have to question or worry about whatsoever, okay? All you need to be concerned about is this is what this spread cost you. It's $2.81, okay? Because if the market was to go in your favor, whereas a big explosive rally, remember that both calls go up in value and the one that you have more time on, that has more value than the one that's expiring in the shorter term because time decay is very fast, okay? So the longer time you have out there, the shorter or the longer it takes for that time decay to kick in. So you don't have as much of an erosion on the ones that you're buying as you do with the selling. And that's where the beauty of the time spread comes in, okay? So just to make it short and sweet, it means like this. When the slides were created, when the time spread was put on, as we're talking today now, a few weeks later, the time decay has been more extreme in the shorter options, shorter term expiration than in the longer term ex expiration. Today, it's August of the 11th, okay? So it's a few weeks since I've created the slide for this presentation. We still have another two months before expiration for the 140 call for the October 15th, okay? The August 13th, that expires in two days. And that's where we're gonna get into the beauty of the math of this and how it actually pads your positions, whether you have or long the, the stock or not long the stock, okay? Whether you have the call position on or the put position on. But before we do that, let's just get into the basic mechanics in review for the put, which is the same, but in reverse. So the strike price remains the same at 140, okay? So we sell the August 13th option, 140 strike price at 239 is the bid. That is the option that we sell. Remember the front month is the one you sell. And October 15th is the term at longer term option out in the back month, uh, the same strike price of 140 at a $4.80 ask price. And that would be the difference there for the net debit of $2.41, which is equal to $241 debit. That's the cost to put on one spread, one calendar spread or time spread, which would be either a call if you were bullish or a put if you were bearish as far as which spread you would put on. Okay, so once again, the basics, you are selling the front month option and you are buying the back month option. The strike prices are the same. We use 140 in our example here for both of these, okay? And then you can see what the net debit is, okay? So this is your risk up front. Is the $281 on the call or $241 on the put? Now, whereas IBM today, ironically, IBM today is only a couple dollars higher. So let's say that you were bearish this or slightly neutral and you put on the put spread what would have happened with that? Okay, well, with that spread, you have the uh, market price is $2 higher, okay? So you would have the put values because of this, the market movement alone, you have a little bit of a decreasing um, value in price, meaning that the option that you purchased as well as the one that you sold would go down in value. Now, obviously the one that you sold, you want that to go down in value as much as possible, correct? Um, the one that you purchased, that's the one that you don't want to go down in value too much or hopefully not too much. So um, now as far as IBM, 
where does it where is the uh the august 13th strike price so for 140 right now for the the calls right now it's at two dollars and 31 so it's actually not that far off from the price that was paid back when this slide was created but remember the strike the now the market is two dollars higher than it was when this um slide was created so there's two dollars of premium just in market movement above the strike price 140 and that's where that value comes in however it expires in 40 just over 48 hours on friday so that two dollars and 54 um cents or 254 dollars of value no matter what on friday at the close of the markets it will be worth zero it doesn't matter whether it goes the market goes up at ten dollars or if it breaks ten dollars that option will expire no matter what on friday and as, as long as it's above 140 it will have some value it has to fall below 140 for it not to have any value um, now the October call that will no matter where the market's at that will still have value now because it doesn't expire until October the 15th so now how do you manage this spread so like for instance right now there's two days left and let's say you did the call spread what would you do okay well if you were let's say we're, we haven't even talked about owning the stock so you were neutral to bullish this spread so one thing you could do is you wait until Friday and no matter what, when there's still only just a couple hours left, there'll still be some premium left, but it'll be next to nothing. You can buy back that option, or you can let it expire into the close and sell another option on the close. And that would be how you leg into another um, calendar spread, meaning that since the August 13th expiration is up, you would need to either buy into or sell a August 20th expiration month or further um, out. I would say that you don't want to do something only a week or so out because the only value right now that you have in this option is the fact that the market is $2 above the strike price. If it wasn't for that, this market, this uh, option would be worthless pretty much the 140 call. So for instance, if we were, if the market was at 140 right now, or especially at a dollar, let's say 139, the 140 call would be worth next to zero. The October 140 call would still have value because you're close to the strike price and you still have a few months left. So it has time premium. Okay. Now when you're in the last few days, the time premium premium is already eroded. So all you have left is that premium from the market price. So you can either, if you were to just want to roll out of this, you could sell this option, you could, or buy it back right now and sell another one. But like I said, the ideal thing would be to wait until Friday, because no matter what the market movement is not going to impact that very much. Um, or what you can do on Friday is you let that expire and then you just sell your October 15th, 140 call on the close. And that would close out the position completely because remember the August 13th expires on Friday. So no matter what, once that close happens, if you sell your October 15th call, both options would be done. They would be out of your account. One would be sold and you would have money that would come back from the premium that's left. And then obviously from the option that you call, um, that expired, all the money that you took in, that $254, that remain, that is still yours. So that would be, uh, be offset. So your net debit would be offset by what you take back when you buy your um, October 140 call on expiration Friday. That's if you buy it. Now, if you were to sell another option, like say a September option, four weeks out and try and do the same thing, maintain, because basically the market's in the same spot, um, that would be another way to pad this spread. And then your net debit for your cost actually goes down because you already took in $2.54. And if you sell another option, which right now, if you were to sell, let's say the September 10th, 140 calls, you would get right now three, it would be 377. So $377. So if, the, if you went one more month, if you rolled the spread and the market went nowhere, then you would have made the whole net debit on the uh, original spread plus a profit no matter what. So that's how you can profit one way, um, just by knowing right there 
where the market's at after you've gotten to this point and you've rolled out one strike price. Um, the same thing can be with the uh, puts. Now, for instance, just because the market's only a couple of dollars higher, it hasn't made higher move highs. It's been going sideways. What happens if the bearish trend comes back? Okay, so that would be something that over the next couple of days, it may happen. Maybe the same thing happens to the put spread. Um, right now, if you were to deal with your put spread, you have the issue that you know that your put right now um, that you bought uh, for the October 15th put, it's not lesser in value because the market's $2 higher, okay? But it does have a time premium, okay? So if you were to still have that option on, let's say you wanted to roll it, okay? Then you are looking at, um, just real quick, sorry, I'm just pulling this up for October. So the 140, yeah, so for October, the put is at $3.40, so 340. So right now it's down about $1.40 on that option price. However, you sold that put the other, the August 13th. Now that one has gone down in value as well. It only has two days till expiration. And that one is, where is that at? Um, yeah, that has next to zero. So that one is where, this is a situation where you would have lost a little bit of money on this one here, but because we have so much time left, you could even roll this one and still find value in this calendar spread. So you're taking advantage of the, the option that you sell with a short time frame to evaporate in its premium, meaning that whether the market moves or doesn't move, you're not you're going to make a, have a chance to pull a profit and generate some income. Now, let's say you own the stock. Before we get to the next example, this when we started out, we're just saying if you're bullish, you would put on the call spread. If you're bearish, you would put on the put spread, which right now the call spread would be making you some money and give you the opportunity to roll the spread. Um, the put spread also, because the market hasn't moved as much, gives you the opportunity to roll that spread as well, in which case you would be able to basically offset the whole cost of the original spread um, over the next month or two. To if the market goes sideways and especially if it goes lower um, or you could just cancel the spread. Um, another thing is that had you done both sides, <laughs> you actually would have been able to offset both going into this Friday with the profit. So, all right. So now if you own the stock, that's where you would have the put spread on. And this is where it gets kind of interesting because let's say you own the stock. So right now the stock is $2 higher. So you would be up $200 on the value of your stock you would be also the put option that you sold, which is expiring in two days, is worth not very much right now. And it's definitely worth zero, which is another $239. Um, and you would be able to sell your October 15th put um, for, let's see, at least a hundred, yeah, over a hundred dollars. So you would end up being able to capitalize right now had you owned the uh, stock off of this put spread, you would have been able to make money, especially going into Friday where you can sell out the uh, October 15th option and you would be up, uh, yeah, net, you would be net up over $100 on top of the $200 of price movement from the stock. All right, so let's get to our next example because Amazon is something you're all very familiar with. So just real quick review. Um, for that last one, bearish calendar put spread, you are bearish the underlying asset. You sold the August 13th for that $2.39. You bought the, uh, the October 15th for $4.80. And then you had a net debit of $241. We saw how that worked out going into today's trading. Um, and if you were bullish the calendar spread, once again, you sell the front month, the August, which was the 140 call at two for 254. And you were buying the October 15th for what the 140 strike price for 535 for net debit of 281. That was your risk on that. And we saw that on both of those spreads, you were able to pull in some money and give yourself a chance to roll for that spread. All right, Amazon, this is where it gets really fun to see what happens when you have a major market move. So, and this impacts both of them. So at the time of this spread, um, or excuse me, when I put the slides uh, together um, to about these time spreads, Amazon had been coming off of new highs and had just made a higher move low. So it was trending higher, okay? So at the time I looked at the 3,600 strike price and figured, well, that's right in the middle of the, the range for that day when I was um, looking at it back at the end of July. 
market's trending higher. So, okay, so we have a bullish scenario here and we have a bearish scenario. And I figured, well, what happens if this market actually runs out of gas here and it turns out to um, break this trend line? Let's say we have a pullback. Where would it go down to? So let me see, is the strike price good? So I came up with these two levels in this target zone here. Well, to make a long story short, the market was at 3,600, just over that. When I put it together, now Amazon's trading at 3,310. So it's fallen below this target area. So as far as this bearish put spread, boy, does this thing have some interesting numbers, especially when you look at everything with Amazon is expensive when you're talking about the numbers. It's pretty crazy, right? So especially when you think about that, when it when, it, when you're talking about options, the last one we were talking about $2.85, something like that, that's $285. Now we're looking at options where you're talking about these are thousands and thousands of dollars per uh, per spread. But there's also a lot of money to be made on these spreads too. And the more expensive they are, the more expensive that time decay is as well. So let's get, look, get into it right now. So at the time, we were looking at this 3,600 strike price. Selling the August 13th, because that was three weeks out, four weeks, just under four weeks to expiration. It was a call once again, and the bid was at 114.65. Then we were looking also at the 3,600 same strike price call with an October 15th expiration to purchase that had a 193.60 ask. This is an expensive de debit time spread to put on. Just for one spread, the net debit is $78.95. So that's $7,895 put up front. But remember, the strategy is neutral. So they both are of the same strike price, different months. And even though you sold the one option, which would give you or someone could exercise against you, you're covered by the one that you purchased. And that one lasts longer than the other one. So you're totally covered in that regard. So your net debit for that one just under $8,000. Now let's say you're bearish. You're like, hey, you know what? This market's been trending higher and higher, but I don't know. I think Amazon's good for a little short-term correction. And even if it just comes back a little bit, here's a nice little target zone. Let's put on a, instead of buying the stock, I mean, think about it. If it's a net debit to put on a calendar spread, for a call spread like that, how much does it cost to buy the stock? Oh, that's right. It costs over $36,000 per, per block. So how many option spreads can you put on that? Well, you could put on six. Well, definitely uh, five. All right. So for the bearish, let's say you wanted to sell this market, you know, or you own the stock and you're like, you know what? I don't want to get out of my Amazon stock. I want to hang on to it just in case it goes up. Well, now is a good time to put on a bearish put spread just in case the market goes down. I'm going to make some money on the, on the put spread. And then also I still own the stock. It pads the losses, okay, from the equity loss on the, on the actual underlying asset. So in this case, once again, remember the front month is the August 13th, 3,600 put. And it was at 101.85 bid. The back month, the further out leg is the October 15th ex expiration. 3,600 strike price put for 175 ask. This worked out to be a net debit of 7,315, meaning 7,315. Now, as far as the calls, it's kind of funny how this works out when you look at these, these numbers. Um, the August 13th calls, remember how this is priced here at 114.65, that's what they were sold at. Um, now they are at basically next to nothing. They're at 19 cents. So that's $19. That's it. That's all that's left. And there's two days left till expiration. So time premium is all gone. The last week or so, there is no really time premium left. It's only the value of the strike price and where it's at. Um, and you can see that for $19, I mean, right now that you're looking at a strike price, once again, of $3,600, that's almost $300 away, which for Amazon, this market can go up $300 in a day easily. Um, doesn't mean that it will. And especially since it's trading, been trading lower, odds of it bouncing back, unless there's some key news in the next two days, that option is going to expire worthless. So the good thing is that 114.65, or actually, um, 
which was actually $11,465, um, that remains in your account come expiration. But you do have the option that you purchased. How much is that left over? Well, because it has time premium left and it's expires in October, it's worth 3302. So that's only worth, you know, 3302, you know, that's not worth that. I mean, it's still worth some money, but you can see how much of a difference that took off of that spread. It's huge. Okay. Now as far, whoops, let's go back. Sorry about that. Now for the bearish one, this is where it gets interesting and you can see how much money you can make on calendar spreads when they go your way and the market really explodes. Okay, so remember how we had this um, selling the August 3600 put for 101.85? Well, now it's worth around 285.77. So now it's worth more than what you sold it for. However, the other put, the October 15th 3600, is worth 311.05. So the put that you purchased is worth more money as well. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this one. Why would you do anything with this spread at all? Think about this if you put this calendar spread on and you own the stock. So now you're down, the market was at 36.17, now it's around 33.10. So basically it's $300 lower. So you're down $300 a share on 100 shares of Amazon stock. Okay, well, that's a shame and that that's, that's that hurts, but because of the bearish calendar spread, you would be pulling in a lot of money, especially if the market does nothing. Like let's say the market doesn't move over the next two days and expires on Friday where it's at. You still that time pre that premium of $285 that's still left on this August 13th expiration option. Well, that goes to zero. Now, obviously, because the market's lower, it wants to be exercised on. So you would just roll out of this position. Okay, because the other one offsets it. Okay, so you would make that money off of the other one. So you would end up get catching that directional move, making money off of this spread when you're buying it back. Um, well, actually, excuse me, you're buying back the August and you're selling out the October, or you could buy back the August on Friday for next to nothing. Um, and then except for the, the distance of the strike price, which is 3,600 to 3,300. So there's that $300 is built into there um, and then roll it out with another option. So you could do that if you were still bearish this uh, Amazon market, but I would say the thing to do with this one after catching that move would be to liquidate the whole spread period and take the, the money from that one, uh, which would then off, be offset Where, with the call thing. If you were to put both of them on or if you were in that situation, I would say, well, after this point, you probably want to just let it go and see what happens because you have some big numbers. Who knows? Amazon might get a little rally, but you know the October is where you still have time. Between now and October, you have Christmas time coming and a lot of Christmas ordering coming, I wouldn't doubt that Amazon makes a run for new highs. So that's what you could also do with that spread. Okay, so we've covered how these spreads work. And remember that if you have the underlying equity using the put spread is a way of hedging any type of downward movement. And also like if you look at the first example with the IBM where the market barely didn't move at all, Either one, the bull or the bearish scenario would yield you a, not just a pot profit for the current market situation, but the ability to roll into either an extension of that calendar spread. And you would want to go in this situation. So expiration is on Friday. You would want to wait till Friday to see how much more of these options decay and erode because of the fact that they are expiring in the afternoon and there's no longer any um, premium left on this, especially the ones that are um, against the strike price where they're negative. So you don't have to worry about those, you know, and then the situation is, do you roll them? You know, so that's why you pick the further out month, three to four months out. In this case, it's October. So that gives you a chance where you initiate it in July with an August option. Okay. And then when you come to, then basically it'll be between last week, the end of last week into this Friday expiration would be where you either roll, it's where you make the decision to roll the front month option or to get out of the spread entirely sometime between now and the expiration on Friday of all of the full spread, or you roll into another um, month, but in this case it would be a September month because you want to have enough 
of a distance out in time where there is some time premium to a road and you know that still the October 15th as far as time premium is not going to decay as fast as the September uh, options would. So this is where you get flexibility whether you're in a bullish situation or a bearish situation. Okay, so we're going to get to some questions in just a moment guys. Sorry, I know it's been you're waiting for that. We get to it and we're coming there. All right. So Amazon call spread, just to remind you, just so you remember once again, when you're doing the bearish calendar put spread in this situation, you are bearish to underlying asset, Amazon. So in this case, you sold the August 13th, 3600 put for 101.85. You bought the October 15th back month, same strike price, 3600 put for 175 for a net debit of 73.15 or $7,315. Um, if you were bullish in this scenario, you would have been putting on the uh, bullish calendar spread. You would be selling the August 13, 3,600 call for 114.65, buying the October 15, 3,600 call for 193.60 for a net debit of 78.95. That's $7,895. So those would have been your costs. Remember, there is a cost putting on these calendar spreads. So what do we remember for tips? Calendar spread tips. Select an option expiration for the long option at least two to three months out. Okay, in this situation, it was about three and a half. Um, sell the options with shorter expirations. Okay, remember always the front month is the one month that gets sold, the back month is the further out month. That one is the one that you purchase, that's the one that you are long that offsets the position and makes it neutral, being long one and short one of the same strike price. No more than a month when initiating position. Okay, so, um no more than a month when initiating the positions, meaning, okay, the, the short-term uh, uh, options, when you wanna go out, you don't wanna just put one out that's four months out in the back end and then three months out in the uh, front end. You wanna go somewhere between basically three, two and a half, three weeks upwards of four to five weeks. So somewhere in that just under a month to a month, depending on the, the liquidity of the option you're dealing with. Some have most, most have more than one expiration week these days. Some have only one in a month, depending on the liquidity or the strike prices. So um, that's where you want to trade liquid markets and pick these spreads where you have those options available to you, no pun intended. So no more than a month um, when initiating the position means, you know, no more than a month month out between the two also. So like, for instance, when you roll this one that we, our previous example was August and then rolling into September, you wouldn't want to roll into a later September um, later on because you already have October. It starts getting too close to the final expiration month. You need to have that gap of at least a month and a half or so or so. Okay. So leg into a calendar spread when you are long a call with a significant profit. Um, that's another thing. Um, when would you put on a, a calendar spread? Let's say that you never were long the stock, but you happen to have been long, let's say, I don't know, the November or even this October call a month ago. And all of a sudden you're thinking, hey, you know what? Amazon, I think might be running out of gas. Well, that's a time where all of a sudden you have this winning profit in this call. You just throw on a shorter month expiration and you turn your long call into a calendar spread. Okay. And then you know that if the market goes nowhere, and especially if it goes down, you're padding, you're, you're protecting your profits and you're adding to your bottom line. Um, so once again, laying into a calendar spread when you think the underlying asset may go sideways or lower, um, you can ride the dips in the market this way. So for those of you that just trade calls or even puts, you can leg into calendar spreads when you are trading the swings in the market. You know, once again, remember like, like the number I gave you is not a nonsensical number. Markets trend only 30% of the time for the most part, especially equities. So make sure you do your trend analysis before entering the trade. Remember both of these, we were looking for a potential sideways to lower trade. We had technical indicators and analysis that were not necessarily being as bullish as 
you know, one might want to be for those particular examples. Um, be aware of the expirations. Remember, the shorter term expiration does come due. You don't want to all of a sudden have like, for instance, if you had the spread on next Monday, you don't want to be shaking your head like, don't I have an option expiring soon when you find out that it already expired on Friday and you have a long position on in an option, which may be good. It may not be good. Usually when it turns out from my ex experience, when you've messed up a position count somehow, the errors never go your way. You're always on the wrong side. So don't let that happen. Um, if the short option is out of the money, it expires worthless, but if not, consider buying back the option, ex exiting the spread or legging the spread. Calendar option spreads are a neutral strategy that can be directional. If the market goes your way, then you have a lead on the trend with the long option. Remember that, that like for instance, in this case, on the puts, um, especially with Amazon, you can either let that one option expire worthless on Friday. And then, hey, guess what? Now you're long, you know, you could, or excuse me, you would buy out of that one. So you didn't have to worry about the uh, being exercised on it. And then you still are long the put, meaning you have the right to exercise a short position from that um, price in Amazon. So that would give you a lead on that. Remember that that, uh, that particular scenario can pan out also. Ultimately, the trader intends for the short dated option time decay to be greater than the longer dated option, meaning that whatever happens in the marketplace, the time decay is going to overwhelm that trade and you're going to end up making money off of the short position expiring worthless or, or being bought back for next to nothing in the period of time that you're holding on to this calendar spread. Okay, so Remember to maximize your option trading potential with e-options for your stock ETF and option trading using calendar spreads is one way. Use their free option strategy tools like Options Play. You can see how different option strategies work with that. The free option strategy guidebook available at eOption.com will explain the strategy we talked about today and many others. And you can use the free paper trading account to test your strategies like this one. ETF and stock trades are commission free. Remember that at eOption and option contracts commissions are only 10 cents. All right. So now let's look at some of these questions real quick. What is the best course of auction action if the call that I sold got exercised early? Okay, well, you wouldn't have to worry about that because the other option offsets that. Okay, so you don't have to worry about being exercised in spreads like this because one covers the other one. It would just be the same thing. As you're getting exercised, you pass that, then you exercise yours, it washes out. So that's why you usually don't have to worry about these things. Um, if you do, that's well. When you're naked, the option you do, but when you're covered like this, you don't have to worry about it because one will can't. It's why it's a it's a neutral strategy. No matter what, you can't get burned on that. You know what your initial debit is. That's the most you can lose. And as far as what you make, it depends on when you exit the uh, strategy and how much market movement has or has not happened. Um, let's see. Why did you choose to sell August versus September? Okay. Well, at the time of the webinar when I was creating the slides, it was the last week in July. So now remember, the, you pick out the furthest out month, which is the October that has the least time decay because it is it has the most time so and time decay the further out you go the less time decay you have um and when or when you're only have a few days left like now you don't have much time decay left because there is no time left um, but in between the last few days and the last couple of weeks that's when you see the biggest decline in dollar value of the option so whether you bought or sold the option the option value of time premium during that time that's when it decays the most so you want the one that you buy since you're purchasing the option you don't want that time decay to go as fast as the one you're selling that should make sense the one you're selling that's the one where you want time decay to go as fast as possible so that's why you sell um the shorter um, month out um now why not september versus august well in this case there was still um, just under four weeks left before expiration. Um, the September would be more like, that would be more like six and a half, seven weeks. So the September is very close to the October when, the, when I was doing this webinar and even now. So now as rolling it, now if you already had the October on, um, or even now you could still do it, you could do an October, September, but remember that you're gonna have a much more rapid time decay on your October option now moving forward than you did over the last month and a half. So that's the whole thing is the shorter term leg is where time decay works in your favor and you take advantage of that. And the fact that you're selling the option means that 
you sell it at the premium, you get the time decay, and then you buy it back or let it expire worthless. And that's where you make your money off of that that time. That's why it's called a time spread. Time is where you make your money. And as long as there isn't a major market move or only a slight market move, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to profit off your calendar spread. Then if there is a market move, it depends on how much it moves in your favor. So unless it goes totally against you, like in the example here where we had Amazon with the call spread. Um, let's see, we have another question here. Is the dividend payout on the ninth an important variable to keep in mind? Um, okay, well, that's something that okay, it dividend payments coming out can be important and they cannot be important in the sense that um, for regular consistent companies to pay a dividend, usually the stock is reflective in its price going into the dividend, meaning that you, it locks up a lot of volatility. So unless there's something that really moves the stock, um, they know that on the day of uh, dividend payout that the company is going to be giving out a whole bunch of cash. So um, that can affect um, certain calls and put positions. Um, so yeah, so the dividend payout, um, the fact that it happens to be paying out on the ninth, um, you know, uh, would that be indicative of having some impact? It can, absolutely it can, um, but it's it depends on where your position is. If um, if your options were expiring the same week, you know, like if it's you're talking about yesterday, or excuse me, Monday um, for option, or excuse me, for the dividend payout and what's going on with the time spread, not much on the front month. Um, um, maybe a little bit on the back end uh, would be for that spread um, for that particular situation. But the dividend payout, that's a whole nother play. And there's actually option strategies you would use to play the dividend um, move. Um, I don't think it would really be affecting uh, this one so much because of the fact that um, whatever the market moves you're putting on, it's the same strike price, just a matter of a different month. So where you gain in the actual stock premium part of the option price, you gain in, in both options. So where you lose it, you gain it. That's a neutral um, wash. That's why it's a neutral position because that's on a um, time or excuse me, price has no indicative um, value for as far as the uh, or difference in value between the uh, two different months. Um, okay, will we get a copy of this presentation? Yes, um, after tomorrow it will be available. Um, and uh, by the way, if any of you want a copy of my book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, it's available today through Saturday on Amazon on, in Kindle version only for free. So you don't have to be an Amazon customer or whatever. You can download it. Um, if you are an Amazon Prime member, I think you're already pretty much set where you just, you can, because I think you have to read no matter what every month, X, whatever pages, whatever. So for those of you that are part of that or the Kindle Club, you can just check out the book and it doesn't cost you a dime. Um, and get a copy for yourself, high probable Japanese candlestick pattern. So don't forget to do that. Um, so you get a copy of that today, just like the presentation of this tomorrow. Um, it'll be on the YouTube channel for eOption.com. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share that one if you haven't done so already, um, just like my YouTube channel also. Um, let's see from Mark. Let's see with the call, if the stock is over 140 as you approach 813, isn't there a risk the call you sold could be assigned to you? Um, once again, if it comes to assigning when it comes to these spreads one cancels out the other so you don't have to worry about the assigning of the call um, on expiration um do could it possibly happen well yeah but then you don't have to worry about it because the other one rolls it out and that, that covers it um so but like i said you can always get out of the option before, instead of letting it expire worthless and then you don't even have to worry about any of that and then usually that just gets cleared through the exchange and what have you there's ways that that gets washed out and especially when you have a neutral position you don't have to worry about that it's only if you were naked the call then that's a totally different situation where then you're getting assigned well then it's all on you um let's see as the stock swings around 140, the implied volatility will slide down over this time. This will erode the price of October options. Um, yes, but it will also erode the, uh, the other ones as well. How can you estimate this effect? Um, in this case, um, that volatility uh, variable, it affects both options. So that ne it's neutral. The only thing that really you're trading here is the time. That's the biggest part of the spread. Um, so as far as when it comes to the volatility, when you first put on the spread, um, for value, that could be in that situation, 
it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. So where the option you sell um, gets gains from the high volatility, the option you buy hurt gets hurt by the higher volatility. Um, and the same thing happens, um, or it's worse or the other way. If the volatility is low, now that's the situation where you can gain where um, let's say you sold into low volatility or put out or bought, bought the spread on low volatility, where you obviously you're buying the back month, you're selling the front month. Um, because there's such an erosion of the options, if all of a sudden, like in this case, you're a couple of days of Rex or <coughs> excuse me, Friday expiration, your, uh, your front month, uh, August option is about to expire, um, and volatility kicks up the value of the, of the option that you bought in the back month is supported in price by the volatility boost. So in that case, <coughs> excuse me, if you get out of the, of the option spread entirely, you may see a little bit of a kick because of volatility. It just, just happens to be, um, or if you um, roll it, then then you're getting burned because, um, in one sense, well, actually, in that way, you'll be getting. It would help you because you already own the back month. Rolling into a September option with a higher volatility, <coughs> excuse me, would offset your price a little bit more. Sorry, I've been talking straight without any water. Okay. Let's see. So that should explain that little thing. All right. One last question before we turn it over to um, one last plug in Gina. Okay. The, but the difficulty is on the bearish or bullish. Uh -huh. When is it defined? Any move in the field of investing is no probably leverage protection. Okay. I'm not quite sure um, what that means about that. Leverage protection was existing. Yeah. Okay. The leverage of protecting the existing stock. Okay. That's where, for instance, if you are bearish, the uh, put calendar spread is what you would initiate. Um, and you can think of it this way is where you don't want to get rid of the stock. You're looking to insure it a little bit. And should there be a either no market movement or a little correction, you have the chance to capitalize off of that. Um, also, if you are bullish, you know, you can look at it as where if you were long calls, you would uh, put on the calendar spread uh, or turn it into a calendar spread because you're not sure if the market's going to maintain its tr true bullish posture or whether it is going to uh, start to go sideways. In which case, if it doesn't, if it's not, a, if it's only slightly bullish to neutral, you can still benefit from that market condition. So I think we've gotten to all those questions. Well, those are really good questions today, guys. I just got to tell you, um, pretty interesting topic. Remember to check out this video again, pass it on to your friends. And uh, don't forget, you can get my book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. The Kindle version is free. And also don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Forex Trading Unlocked on YouTube. All right. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to Gina. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Teddy. That was very interesting and informative. And those calendar spread tips were really helpful. And thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. And just a few reminders before we go today. Um, as mentioned a few times, a recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos and you'll get updates as soon as they're available if you subscribe on YouTube. We'll also be sending you an email in the next week with a copy of the recording as well. But if you'd like it right away, we encourage you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, please visit eoption.com. Uh, we have so many wonderful resources on there, I can't stress. We have so much on option education. There's videos, there's clickable option strategy links. So you can, if you have a strategy in mind, you can just click on it and it'll show you charts, motivation. Uh, some of them have videos. So I really encourage you to check that out, um, especially if you're trying to learn more about options. And another great tool, which is kind of the hidden gem of the firm, is we have a service called Options Play. And it's a free tool. It's normally $500 annually, but it's free to all e-option customers. And basically, it scans thousands of stocks each and every day, and it highlights potential option trade opportunities for you. So with the market going higher and higher, and if you're looking for new ideas, or ways to generate ideas. This is a wonderful tool. So I encourage you to check it out. And if you go to eoption.com, we do have a page on options play. And so, um, and also, um, you know, we also have lots of wonderful videos on our YouTube channel, as it says on the screen. And then um, last, I just wanted to bring up our next 
webinar. So that will be on Wednesday, September 1st at 1 p.m. And it is called Key Points to Know About Selling Options. And we're going to have Ed Modla at the Option Industry Council speak about that. He's been also a popular speaker with us. So um, if you'd like to sign up, you can just go to eoption.com under resources, and you'll see a webinar and video tab, and you can just sign up there. So thank you again for your time, and we hope to see you on September 1st for our next webinar. Stay safe, and bye now.